Hey everyone, and welcome to Skillcap's first Shadowlands guide. I'm Mystic, and today I'll be explaining exactly how the most prominent new feature coming in Shadowlands works. This guide will detail everything you need to know about covenants, soulbinds, and conduits to help prepare you for dominating the PvP ladder the moment you hit max level. But before we get into it, if you're as tired of BFA and as excited for Shadowlands as I and many other players are, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to get notified the moment we release all of our awesome upcoming Shadowlands PvP content. We've already got plenty of really cool guides planned and are looking forward to keeping you all in the loop with what's hot and what's not in the PvP scene. And if you're interested in following me, you can find me over at twitch.tv slash mystzr. Alright, so to get started, we're going to talk a little about what each covenant offers when it comes to PvP. First and foremost, each covenant has a unique signature ability that all classes share. This means that no matter what class you play, there are always going to be just four different signature abilities for the four different covenants. Venthyr get Door of Shadows, a 35 yard range teleport with a 1.5 5 second cost on a 1 minute cooldown. Necro Lords get Fleshcraft, an absorb shield that equals up to 20% of your health when channeled on a 2 minute cooldown. Now, this ability does offer a larger shield when channeled next to a corpse, but this most likely won't apply in Arena as you've probably won the game if you're channeling this next to a corpse. Night Phase signature ability is Soul Shape and allows you to shapeshift into a Vulpin, which increases your movement speed by 30% and gives you a 10 yard range teleport on a 4 second cooldown for 12 seconds, all of which is on a 90 second cooldown. And finally, we have the Kyrian with the Summon steward ability. Now this is supposed to provide you with three files of serenity which restore 15% health and remove all curse, disease, poison and bleed effects. However, when attempting to use the steward in arena on the beta, it's not currently giving you the files for that game. This leads us to believe you won't be able to make use of this covenant signature ability in arena, either that or it's just currently bugged and will work in the future. Okay, so that covers all of the covenant signature abilities. There is however one extremely important detail I haven't mentioned yet, and that's soulbinds. Soulbinds are a feature of your covenant covenant and allow you to augment your covenant abilities. We'll come back to this later. Next, let's talk about the second ability you gain from your covenant, the unique class ability. And by class ability, I mean class ability. No matter what spec you're in, you'll always have access to the same class ability. So let's say you're playing a paladin and you choose the Venthyr. You will of course gain access to Door of Shadows, the signature ability that all classes of the Venthyr get. But you will also be able to use Ashen Hollow, the Venthyr paladin ability. No matter if you're Ret, Holy or Prot, you'll always have both Door of Shadows and Ashen Hollow. Whereas, if you choose the Night Fae as your covenant when playing a Paladin, again, you'll gain access to their signature ability that all classes get, Soul Shape, but you'll also get the unique class ability for Paladins, Blessing of the Seasons. In total, with there being a unique class ability for each covenant and 12 classes, we end up with 48 different covenant class abilities. And just like I mentioned earlier with the covenant signature abilities, these covenant class abilities can also be empowered with your soulbinds. Okay, so what exactly are these soulbinds I keep mentioning? Well, once you choose a covenant, you gain access to three soulbinds unique to that covenant. These are essentially talent trees that allow you to empower your covenant signature ability and class ability in different ways and also offer different bonuses both in and out of combat. A great example of this is with the Necro Lord signature ability, Fleshcraft. As I already mentioned, their ability provides you with a 20% absorb shield when channeled for 4 seconds. While this doesn't sound particularly strong on its own, if you use Plague Divisor Merilith as your soulbind, you'll gain access to the final trait, Ultimate Power, which makes you immune to crowd control while your Fleshcraft absorb is up. Suddenly, an ability that seemed mediocre may now be incredibly strong for some classes. Note that in its current form, you are not immune to roots. The same applies to the Covenant class abilities, with some soulbinds offering global bonuses to your class ability. An example of this would be the Kyrian and soulbind, Pelagos. No matter your class, combat meditation will increase your mastery by 5% for 20 seconds when you activate your covenant class ability. This means that both a mage using Radiant Spark and a monk using Weapons of Order, their respective Kyrian class abilities, will gain an increase to their mastery through their soulbind. It's worth noting that after choosing your covenant and gaining access to your first soulbind, you won't immediately have access to all soulbinds or all of the traits. You'll need to unlock the other two soulbinds by progressing through your covenant campaign and earn renown by completing activities within the game to unlock the Rose of Power in your Soulbind. Okay, so that pretty much covers everything you need to know about Soulbinds. But there's more. On top of the bonuses you gain from your specific Soulbind, you'll also be able to make use of four Soulbind Conduits, or just Conduits for short. Each class has access to unique Conduits, which provide bonuses to their abilities. And each Covenant also has access to one unique Conduit, which provide a bonus to their Covenant's class ability. These Conduits fit into the Potency, Finesse, and Endurance slots within your Soulbinds. Each Soulbind then offers a different selection of these Conduit slots, allowing for different combinations of Conduits depending on which Soulbind you choose and the route you take through your Soulbind's Rose of Power. For example, using this build with the Night Phase Soulbind Nia gives you access to one Finesse, one Endurance, 
endurance and two potency conduits. Whereas using this build with Corian will let you use two endurance and two finesse conduits. So, you'll need to consider which conduits you'll be able to use when choosing your Covenant build. For example, a Frost Mage may want to use two potency conduits for Unrelenting Cold to increase the damage of Frozen Orb and Ire of the Ascended to increase the damage bonus of their Kyrian class ability, Radiant Spark, along with one Endurance conduit for Tempest Barrier to gain a shield every time they blink, and one Finesse conduit to reduce the cooldown of their blink. Another thing to consider when selecting your conduits is that they actually have 15 ranks which increase their power. This means, while the rank 1 Grounding Surge conduit for Mage will lower the cooldown of counter spell whenever you hit an interrupt by 1 second, the rank 15 version will lower it by 8 seconds, turning a relatively weak conduit into an extremely powerful one. It's not currently clear how you'll be able to increase the rank of your conduits, but we can speculate that this will happen over the course of the expansion as we progress through the different raid tiers and arena seasons. Alright, so now that you know what to expect from the covenant system, along with how soul binds and conduits work, you might be asking yourself how do you go about choosing the right covenant? Well, given that you won't be able to easily change covenant because the current system will probably see you fall quite far behind if you do try to change your covenant, it's important you make the right choice the first time. We'll have videos coming out over the next few weeks and months, which will detail our opinion on what we think is the best covenant for each class in Arena. For now though, the best thing we can do is make sure to look at both the signature ability and the class ability when choosing our covenant. Don't just pick a covenant because one of the abilities are good for your class. For example, you may consider that having the additional nobility as a rat paladin from selecting the vent there as your covenant is a huge deal. Finally, after all these years, you've got a gap closer. Well, not quite. The reality is that Ashen Hollow, the Paladin Venthyr ability, does not realistically help much in Arena. So, if you were to choose the Venthyr, you'd end up with one ability that's for the most part quite useless. Whereas, if you were to choose the Night Fae, you'll gain access to the signature ability, Soul Shape, one that is quite flexible and offers a decent increase to your mobility, and the Paladin ability, Blessing of Seasons, one that has a ton of potential to be strong in PvP. And to go even further, on top of the baseline abilities you get, you must also look at which Soul Binds have the best traits for your class. Once again, taking a look at the Necrolord signature ability example, while the Absorb Shield from Fleshcraft doesn't seem particularly strong, using ultimate form as a rogue means you can open from stealth while being immune to crowd control, giving you a ton of potential for super strong openers without the risk of being CC'd in any way. All in all though, at this point it's hard to definitively say which covenant is going to be the best for any given class in PvP. However, we do have some ideas and we'll be releasing lots of videos in the coming weeks, including ranking the covenant signature and class abilities for each class based on how they play out in Arena. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.